Today's video, we are going to discuss what is matter. Uh, we'll address topics of what makes up everything. Uh, pure compounds and substances in the universe, mixtures, the elements, molecules, compounds, and the various states of matter. To start with, just to show off the periodic table, everything's going to eventually come back to this. And while we won't dive too deep into it right now, this is a list of all the different elements that make up existence. So what is matter? It's the stuff around you. If you can touch it, if you can feel it, if you can drink it, if you can breathe it, if you can push it, move it, see it, it is stuff. That is what matter is. And all the matter that humans can interact with and find and see and dig up and burn and anything else is made out of these elements. There are a large different number of them. In fact, we're up to 118. So when we think of old Greek philosophy, the elements were earth, wind, fire, and water. Right? Kind of right idea. The universe is made up of stuff. Ends up nowhere near the right amount of things. And so everything around us is composed of different mixtures of all these various different elements. They're unique individual building blocks that can be combined together to make more complex things. If you ever played with Legos or an Erector set, like there's a lot of individual tools that are all slightly different, but the more you combine them, the more you can make larger, more complex things. And so this a general idea of elements and what makes it up, right? Well, let's talk about a little less specific, let's talk about the types of things we find. And so here's a few exam examples. Salt. I've got some water, soda, I have a diamond, I've got some gold, and over here I've got a solid, a liquid, and a gas. So, what is the difference between these? What's going on? What terms do we need to describe them? First and foremost, we need to talk about, well, if I've got a lot of different components, how do I talk about them? First is whether something is pure or not. In this case, it just means that you have only the thing you want. So when we go and look up above, I have water. There's nothing else in there. It's a nice picture, beautiful water. Okay, okay there's little air bubbles, but they'll, they'll leave in a second. You know, all the advertisements for water has always talked about how pure it is. There's nothing else in it. There's no oil, there's no dirt, there's no rocks, there's no fish. It's just the water. It would be considered pure water. Now, water itself is actually made of multiple things. If we go back down the periodic table here, water has hydrogen and it has oxygen. Most of us have probably seen the formula for water, H2O. And while we'll discuss formulas more another day, it's a fairly common one. What does it represent? It represents that there's multiple elements present. And so there's hydrogen and there's oxygen. So you can have pure water, but it is not pure hydrogen, nor is it pure oxygen. When we breathe, we have things like O2. This is the oxygen we breathe. It is technically called dioxygen, but most people just call it oxygen. In this case, there's only oxygen elements around, and so that would be considered a pure form of oxygen, where water is not pure oxygen. It has hydrogens, but you can have pure water. Again, purity just says, do you have only the thing you are talking about? Um, so salt, it's a mix of sodium and chloride, so it is not pure of either of them, but you can have pure salt. If you don't have any dirt in it, if you don't have any seawater or anything in it, well then it's pure salt. So that's the idea for pure substances. 
Mixtures, on the other hand, well, let's jump down a little bit. Let's talk about molecules. So pure substances can be individual elements or they can be combinations of elements. A molecule, very specifically, is more than one component, or sorry, more than one individual element. So what makes up a molecule then? Well, we have an example right here. H2O, it's got three different things. It's got two hydrogens and it's got an oxygen. There are three different individual elements. Granted, two of them are the same, two of them are hydrogen, but that means there's three different things there. So that is a molecule. Over here, dioxygen has two oxygens. Even though there's only a single type of element, there are two individual ones, and so that is a molecule. Molecule is just if you stick multiple of the building blocks together. Now there's a difference between these two, and that is compounds. A compound is a mix of multiple types of elements. So if we think down here, I've got water and I've got dioxygen. Both of them are molecules because they have more than a single element or individual element present. Even if it's two of the same, that's still two different individuals. So they're both molecules, but only water is a compound. Water has hydrogen and oxygen. That means it has multiple types of elements. Dioxygen only has the one. It remains a molecule, but it is not a compound. Go back up to our list up here. Well, water is H2O, salt is sodium chloride, diamond is just carbon. Gold is just gold. Technically, the symbol there is AU. Soda is all sorts of things. It is sugar. It is water. It's some phosphoric acid. It's some color. It's got a lot of different parts in it. It's got CO2 dissolved in it. So if we're trying to think about well, which one of these are elements and which one of these are compounds, Table salt has two different things. So that is a compound. Water, as we said, was a compound. Soda, well, soda isn't pure. It's got such a mix that we can't really discuss whether it is a compound or molecule because it actually has so many different molecules. Um, so it's not gonna come up for one of these. Our bottom two here, diamond and gold, well, diamond is pure carbon, so it is actually just a molecule. Gold is a molecule, and that's a little bit interesting because it's also an element. Metals are a little bit different. You can just keep sticking more and more metal together, like welding them. A small piece can be melted into a bigger, can be melted onto another one, just grow and grow and grow, but it's really just the element continuously. So it is a molecule of gold atom or elements, but I also just call it elemental gold. So that's the difference between our elements, our molecules, and our compounds. Elements are the individual things on the periodic table here. Just any specific one, that's an element. How you stick them together determines whether you are a molecule or a compound. And whether you have only the thing you're talking about or not determines whether it's pure. So water, if it's just water, is pure. Salt, if it's just salt, is pure salt. Soda, well, has a lot of different things in it. I guess you could say it's pure soda. You don't, don't have like rocks and dirt in it or plastic chunks from your bottle, but it's technically on 
When you look at what makes it up, it's many, many, many different things. Which brings us to our next bit. Mixtures. So we go back up here. Well, this is the only one that's really a mixture at the moment. So let's talk about soda. Mixtures come in two types. There is homogeneous, which is same all over. And this is where the soda falls in. If you take a sip from the top of a soda and put a straw and take a sip from the bottom, it tastes exactly the same. Same mix of sugars and water and color. This is a homogeneous solution. Basically, if it dissolves. If it dissolves nicely, it is homogeneous. Um, so sugar is definitely one of them. But you can have another type, heterogeneous. Different in different places. So a heterogeneous solution is more like salad dressing. If you've got an oil and vinegar salad dressing, they make separate layers, they spread out. You can shake them really aggressively, but even then, you still get droplets mixed with each other. If you try and pour it on a salad, they break into little, little droplets in different spots. Heterogeneous solutions do not dissolve nicely. Um, and these are, we don't think about them a as often, but if you have like rocks and dirt and water in a river, like that's technically a mixture. If you, if you don't have the dirt and the rocks, then you've got problems going to where that water is going to. Um, most of the time, heterogeneous things that show up in life are more like catalytic converters in our car. The gases from our engine pass through the catalytic converter, while the catalytic converter does not dissolve, it's a solid. The gas just sticks on the surface and then breaks off. Um, catalytic converters are used to break down toxic byproducts from bad car engine firings, and they help keep the environment a lot cleaner. So heterogeneous has plenty of use, it's just it doesn't mix as nicely. They tend to come up in different situations. That is the type of ways you can put things together. When you have multiple compounds or multiple molecules of different types, they do these different types of interactions. And so a mixture comes about from mixing multiple molecules and or compounds. They can mix evenly and spread out and they're homogeneous, or they can mix into different layers and they are heterogeneous. And then our last, let's go and view a last little one here, states of matter. How, what forms does matter come in? They could be solids, they can be liquids, and they can be gas. And what's the difference? Well, let's zoom in a little bit here. A solid, well, physically we've seen solids. They, are hard objects. Usually they can be crumbly, but they're physically there. They lock in place, they don't move, they don't flow. What that actually looks like materially is that all the different molecules are really rigidly aligned. They're stuck to each other over and over, just right next to each other in a nice a rigid array. This is what it means to be solid. A liquid, on the other hand, they flow, they move, they don't break off of each other, but they stick to one another as they roll around. And so the idea is you don't have as ordered a system, it's not as linked together, and they're free to move. They can drift around as they're stuck to one another. A the liquid, therefore, tends to flow to the bottom of things. If you throw a chunk of metal into a box, it might hit the side and get stuck leaning, where if you poured water into a box, it's going to just fill the bottom. And finally, you've got a gas. Gases are very spread out. They, are, as far as they are concerned, are completely separated from each other. They're bouncing around, and they never run into each other. They just keep bouncing through empty space. They do bump into each other occasionally, but the idea is they're so far apart, they might as well not be touching at all. Gases spread out. They fill their... Like if you put some gas in a box, it's just going to fill the box and then drift away. They don't fall to the bottom, um, they don't lock in the shape, they just take up the shape of whatever you pour them into.
those are the three forms that matter tends to come in on Earth. And so if you have different, I'll clear a few of these out. If you have different things in your solid, you can have a mixture of solids. That's not a very evenly spread out, so that would be a heterogeneous mixture. Um, your liquids, a little more free flowing. And so as long as they freely flow around each other, that would be a fairly homogeneous liquid mixture, as long as they don't layer themselves. If you get a layered system, I'm sorry, where you have one liquid on top and another liquid on bottom, this would be a homogeneous, or sorry, a heterogeneous liquid system. And so you can have free-flowing stuff on bottom and a free-flowing stuff on top, but if they don't pass into each other, that would be more of a heterogeneous. Gases, on the other hand, are almost always homogeneous mixtures. It is nearly impossible to make them not, because they're not actually touching each other. There's no layers to make. They just pass right past each other because there's nothing to bump into. And so gases are almost universally homogeneous. That will complete our section on what is matter.